So can we? Hello, I'm very happy because there is an elite here when it comes to workshops and um, presentations. I'm so happy that there's a group who came to see Marian. Marian, who's an independent filmmaker. I will tell you a short story of Marian. My adventure with the movie started when my father brought a VHS machine to tape recorder to uh, to my house. I was like 14. It was many, many years ago because I, I'm almost 50. I, I might look young, but I'm almost 50. My <coughs> I have a son your age. And then I fell in love with the movie to the I watched all the movies in the uh, in the rentals my my parents uh, built a house outside of the city 30 years ago there was not much to do there and when I was 17 I convinced my parents to because I was uh, uh, a steady customer of a rental place I want uh, they I convinced them to uh, make a rental in our house so that I couldn't pay for that. It worked for maybe two years. Then I left my home. I didn't. G I failed to get to a um, certain university, and then I went to Słubice. And in Słubice, I managed to, <coughs> to, long story short, after three years, to take over a big rental house. And for ten years, I was running a Scorpion rental, and at some point. It was 1997. I don't know if you would remember, if you can remember that, but it was when there was a very famous flood in our city. It was a miracle in this, the Swobica miracle. Our town had to evacuate. And I then, I got a camera just to hold a, a, a movie camera. I will not tell you which one. Of course, it was a digital camera, and at that mo and that was the moment when I felt that I want to make movies, because out of boredom, when j just having this camera, we were shooting footage and we made short forms. Uh, we we edited edited that on VHS machines, and we were and we had sound from Tom Brier video game. I don't know if you remember that game. We put in audio jack and <coughs> I thought I will be able to get that materials. They, they are in my archive somewhere. But it was a breakthrough moment when I decided that I want to make movies. And I got to the school. I, uh, when I was 29, I got to the movie to the film school in Wrocław. When I was lucky because that's Jan Jakub Kolski's team was there after this, the success of pornography in Cannes and after the preparation of Jasmine. Do you remember? Like a, a very good, nice story. And I was I was an ed studying editing in the film school, but before I got there, we made a lot of phones for friends, for uh, during weddings, many forms, which Uh, allowed me, <coughs> which l taught me how to teach with the work with the camera. And Pawoski noticed that uh, who was <coughs> uh, lecturing in the DOP department, and he and he said, "Okay, uh, you left your family in your house. You know, I I, I had a wife and a, and a three-year kid, and I left twice <coughs> to study." I, he said, "Come to my come to my classes because I can see that uh, you're doing very well." And I made a diploma in editing. But I fell in love with DOP work, with uh, with light, working in a team because working in a, on a movie is a is a teamwork, and due to the fact that <coughs> I was very active, I did very quick editing in Jan Kopkowski's workshop, which was then used, and as a as a award, I was invited to um, to Jasmine film set, and I was there with my friend Jan Giles. <coughs> Who's currently one of the better gaffers? Uh, with uh, he works with uh, Smarzowski, the man who does my light. He was doing the light for most of my films, but together, all this film school, uh, with all due respect to film schools, it was nothing in comparison with the thirty days of working on the set. 
it was a moment where I I got immersed in the world of movie until the end of my life because this is something that I will be doing as long as I can because this is the magic the magic of creation under understanding learning this professional path it was a very professional set a very professional production and there I met because and I encountered because here we're talking about my work with Canon cameras I for the first time I encountered Canon which I ordered especially for the set that was the first digital camera its its name was Rubble 100 I got it from the United States my friend brought it from the US not to lie to you it was it was 2006 I paid 12,000 zlotys for that. That was an incredible amount of money. And I still have those cameras uh, here with me, uh, starting from my analog cameras. I'm collecting them and I keep them at home. But that was a moment when I learned, when I was convinced to work with Canon. Canon worked well for me, because for me, Canon is the most analog camera with the digi of the digital cameras available. Of course, I'm talking about cameras which are within the but within my budget because as I'm I, I had to make a choice that I'll be working on projects which are feature f TV forms and my producer accepts uh, my director accepts the work with this camera and he employs me and he has no problem with with this with not being a camera of, of another brand I like that I wanted to show you something from the very beginning when I got to the film school that's my d d diploma movie it's a film now and always it's a full feature film that I did with my friends from my from my uh, my PS 34 shooting days 34 people on the in the crew a film we made my movie with my editor editing professor he was Witold Komichomicki who's the who's the main editor of Jan Jakob Kolski he's editing a lot of movies he said that we're not able to do that and we did that I produced that movie we were invited to Gdynia for a festival after the Gdynia in we were noticed by Yuzek from Los Angeles in the noticed us and he invited us to a festival of f feature movies f fiction movies in Los Angeles plus eight people from the crew I couldn't go unfortunately because my daughter had her first communion but the director all the main crew went but the producer went there and there we made friends with uh, Vienckiewicz and Ferenczy who until today do not believe that we made that movie they said that this is not possible as Sislavek said yesterday so we took on this risk but this movie opened a lot of doors for many of the people from my class because 10 people are very high of those people 10 people are very high in our industry when it comes to to, to my year and I also draw advantage of that because when I'm making some projects I have good connections uh, the in terms of lighting special effects I will not uh, what why am I showing you this material because it's about the comfort of, of having this sort of camera Gosia Potocka is uh, acting here and when we were main, making uh, close shots after two takes he came to me and said Marius why are you making a close shot with me and you're 10 meters from me? I say. Because we made it on the, on digital betters. I said, it, to get to have any sort of depth, I need to be at the maximum, uh, at the maximum uh, focal length. So I need to get away from you with the camera. So these were times <coughs> where depth of field was just uh, just a dream. And then it's a big element of the movie when in terms of storytelling with the so this breakthrough moment another topic I was telling you 
5D Mark II, 5D Mark III, which always had a problem with the uh, with recording. I think there were like 25 megabits. <clears throat> this material was very black. It was m much compressed, and suddenly you get co you, you get C20 camera, which which has internal raw recording and i made on this camera this f f uh, feature material which was emitted i think in a, a pub in the public tv and i don't know it's like in on five seven platforms it was received very well and we got a lot of prizes so a lot of awards and here started my cooperation which also i uh, you have to fight for somebody to notice us and to want to work with us and i made this movie and in the real, right now I'm making this the fifth movie with the same producer. It's Objective Film Studio. Uh, Adam Mischak, who is the brother of the famous Edward Mischak, who's the uh, CEO of uh, TVN Broadcaster. I've managed to get a close relationship with him. We get we met in Cannes. I got uh, um, an award there for documentary. Uh, and these are, you know, the, these are the, the, the accidents and incidents that happen and they go get together and they build your career. And all, together with Mr. Mischak, we agreed that we will make a movie together. And these were f f f f docudramas. Make, when making a movie, Kasiewicz, uh, Łukasiewicz, uh, I worked with Marz Bonaszewski, who played the main role, and we got on very well together. And this cooperation worked so well that many of the scenes together, with many of the, of the scenes together, we agreed between ourselves, and uh, of course between ourselves behind the back of the director, so to speak. But we understood each other very well. We were on the same side when we were analyzing things with the director, so so it, it didn't bring an, around any conflict. With another project, Mariusz Bonaszewski invited me to make his directing debut, and we made the Alchemist from Lwów, his movie, but. We gave, we made it very dramatic. This document because there's like it, it, it is a docudrama of sorts, but here it was a breakthrough moment in my work, because C two hundred the camera, which is a nice camera, but um, it had a problem with sensitivity. Suddenly C five hundred Mark two appeared a camera, and I was making this uh, these movies on C five hundred Mark two, and I used as a second camera. C200 as a sort of additional camera. After Wielerzyński's project, the next project I did on C500 Mark II, I, uh, I already did it on the new equipment that I brought here to show you. This is R5 Cine. And for me, the combination of these two cameras uh, gave me a lot of comfort in terms of logistics and then for Tomasz Poznański when it comes to post-production uh, it was very uh, very um, convenient because they work they, they have very similar image you just have to you have to be careful only w in that R5 does not work very well in the extreme lights or very low lights so you have to be in somewhere in the middle in the sensitivity with c500 you you can do more in my case when i was working with r5 in difficult places we usually make movies in uh, ready um, set designs uh, which are close when there when there's not much intervention in the set design there's a problem to move things so there's a little place to stand for example but it this camera works very well for us of course, the majority of the material we're, we're doing in C500. It's a big, it's a bigger value camera, better material, better footage, but it mixes very well with 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 R5. So, as I mentioned from the in the beginning, why do I work on Canon? Just to be clear, this is my private camera. It's Canon who addressed me uh, because they noticed that I'm working with this camera. This this camera is mine. I bought it. 
nobody forces me to say good things about it. My producer accepts this and I recommend using this camera in a situation. I know it's not a cheap camera, but if you compare it against uh, like a full filming film cameras like Ari and Sony, um, th th in terms of budget, it's a much better option. And it defends itself very well. It has no problem with the footage that we are doing to be bought by uh, Polish national broadcasters or platforms. Why C500 is so valuable for me? It is because it is a very mobile equipment. It's very light it, and it inscribes raw on the uh, on cards so so working with the with the material you don't have to worry about it when you're filming because you have uh, um, you know we can we have double backup with cards which we can then download after the shooting the ND filter which is embedded is another thing well it's good for the tv but in case of projects that we're doing Right now, we made a movie which is called Vibe, <coughs> which takes place in the in uh, uh, through the years the 120 year span. Uh, I we did seven scenes a day, so this was extremely challenging. A set a, a camera set, which can do that it has to be ready to work at all time it has to be convenient to transport so th for us this is a great value from the point of view of um, logistics and organizations so when i uh, when i need to uh, replace the card it's just replacing the card and I i'm ready to go so canon as a company uh, is advertising right now that it will introduce two optics that will allow us to work on the optics which you will not need to uh, not need to change it will give you a higher comfort of work we point attention we focus on that this is important for us and that's why we go with canon when it comes to r5 i'm using r5 for normal standard maybe difficult maybe or difficult uh, difficult locations so to speak It might be a bit of a student thing, but it works very well when you're working before people who are moving. Um, we, we're using optics that have automatic sharpening uh, and uh, we, we steer it through a Wi-Fi panel on a tablet. Works perfectly. You can set everything. And, but what we're using that on, uh, that only in situations where it's difficult, there are difficult conditions. Usually you work on a normal, on a standard um, focus. But if you have a if you have a movement, somebody's coming towards the camera, etc. With a simple zoom for four thousand zlotys, like one thousand less than one thousand euro, this works very well. And this allows us to make shots to which we would need to get a steady cam or a person with a, a man with a steady cam well i have a, a guy who works with this camera he he doesn't have a problem with working from his hand with a autofocus and he's and he's so well acquainted with this control system that of this camera whether it's speaking or the right markers for the control of the focus. What can I tell you more about this camera? R5 raw recording internal. It's great value because you do not have to deal with external equipment. This is also something that I combined these two cameras together. When it comes to aspects of normal everyday work and why I do it. I think this is all. I don't know if you have any questions for me. You can come here, try this camera, handle it. For some of you, this camera might be well known.
I'm at your service. Uh, we can start the camera and test it if you want. Do you have any questions? Guys? I think we have guys from France here. Do you have any questions? Is there anybody who wants to know something on top of this? Just to be clear, I'm working on Cine Optics, uh, which are supplied to me by Canon, five basic optics. There will be some new line of optics coming soon, and the next, the new project that's coming uh, will be done uh, on the new optics. What can I do today? What can I say today? Canon will be with me with 6K format and the raw um, recording. And Tomek Poznański deals with it perfectly as an editor and I in post-production and it will be with me for many, many years. So that's all. C500 and R5. You're still seeing the materials in the background, the majority of those things. These are all, this is all footage from C500. I'm forcing this camera to 3200 of course i'm talking about uh c500 let's not do it on r5 because it it can't cope with it with the standard with the candlelight with a minimal light it's it's uh, you know it's it, it it's easily denoised in da vinci this is all calculated uh, very well what's very important too when we were making movie on old cameras you had to have at least 12 uh, you had to have uh, like big lighting on a car just to sort of get in lighting i have only two three uh, smaller lights on the set and you can use minimal lights because the sensitivity of those cameras with every new model is better is getting better and better the cameras from the top shelf they have such a such a sensitivity that i worked i used to work with a with a um, professional dop who said that the lighting stops being an issue that it would be enough just to have a very very small glimpse of light to get a lot of good effects which we will uh, which we will be managed to test when we go outside uh, where you will be able to test it okay so what can I tell you more? Eh? There's a question. I can't hear the question, sorry. I prefer to buy new equipment. I think the question was about the new versus old. So I'm not renting out my equipment. I'm not uh, there, some people say you don't rent out your wife and your car and I'm not, not renting out my cameras because this is a tool for me These cam the Canon cameras are t totally durable when I was doing for Weigel we had five days of rain everything was full of full of moisture and there was no problem with the cameras my colleague had the camera uh, had this co camera in Africa and he said he was shocked because uh, because mobile phone were going down because of moisture and these cameras didn't they were really well prepared uh, I had a friend who had a she had this camera she made a documentary in Himalaya I remember it was C200 the C200 came to me from Himalaya and we were making a project I think Vilezhinsky Vilezhinsky that, that was the film that I was moving the, it was really battered and it was in minus 16 Himalayas like in some extreme temperatures and she said no problems like no problems but not to have those problems I believe it's how you take care of your equipment for me a camera is a tool of work and thanks to that I'm functioning I love doing what I'm doing and this is this is I would say this is my fishing rod uh, I'm treating my uh, 
camera like a fishing rod because I earn more more money than the people who fish because people usually spend money on the fishing rods but uh, but for me the sat satisfaction is the same every day with a camera is a huge satisfaction for me so I believe that it's better to buy a camera a new camera and take care of it and to just to know what's happening to it, to, to it that nobody overused it nobody uh, put it in some extreme conditions so that you don't have a situation that something might happen on the set you know this is also responsibility uh, that you take on yourself I am hired as a DOP with a whole set of cameras I am hired with two cameras with a whole system with a grip with a drone POV drones I'm the comfort for the producer I I have a, I have a, a cameraman and I have a, a lighting guy and we go like go there in three people and we take take care of everything he, he, uh, the producer does not have to deal with a dr the, um, care about the drone about the camera work etc because I have a person who's a focus puller a guy who's a cameraman and a focus puller at the same time which is extremely important because we make like historical movies but in those historical movies you have very serious actors Wojtek Zieliński, Domaszewski and you cannot allow yourself somebody to, to, to have a wrong focus this is extremely important this approach and the uh, readiness of this equipment and the p quality of people who's, who work with that, that equipment and that m makes me get another another project one after the other I have new productions every year we started from a docudrama, very simple, made in 10 days. And tomorrow I'm going for a post-production for film coloring of a feature film which, to which we convinced the producer together with Martin Głowacki, who's the director here, living here in Kraków. And we made a full feature film, which is an hour, 30 minutes long. And we did it in 22 filming days. But we do that. We did that thanks to the professional crew that we have. And thanks to the fact that our equipment allows for this because it's working well. If you're serious about your job, it's better than to sell uh, a well mm, cared for equipment as a used equipment to somebody else and buy a new one. Of course, it depends on your financial conditions, uh, whether you can afford it. But I think that as a professional, the, depend the dependability of your equipment is an absolute priority. It is a fact. It's a very good thing in Canon cameras I don't know probably most of you don't work with Canon I have the prote I, I have the guarantee in case of any sort of uh, failure from Canon that within 24 hours they will bring me a replacement camera but this is because I got I spent a lot of money with them because I bought all this equipment but this is fan a fantastic backup of course making movies you also have uh, mm, access to other companies which also help which also provide help. It's a very small community. Everybody knows each other. So if you need help, you can you can count on somebody's help. But one day of a, of a delay in, on a filming set, set is a disaster. With our budgets, we have like one filming day is 100,000. If some zlot is 25,000 euros. So if, if everything goes down, it's a disaster. Somebody else has a question? You have a microphone. Turn it on, please. No, no, no. Let him use the microphone. I don't remember right now. I'm very pragmatic. For me, all those numbers, all those... Uh, I don't remember it, it's it's like 16 or 17 I don't remember for me this is I judge the equipment very simply I started I'm doing this, uh, test f footage I discuss with my colorist and I and I accept it or not this is how I bought R5 I don't care about the parameters I don't care about them all those numbers all those um, indices I don't care I know it's important but I'm judging the material about what it gives me I put it on the mixing table and I judge it and it's the color the color the colorist who decides about it I will uh, I have uh, I provide him a footage to force him down or force it up 
to see what I can achieve. And if I like it, I have a very banal approach to that. I don't follow w how many of this parameter is here, how many of that parameter is here. I just do it. I have a I, I have a um, sort of sampling monitor. I know uh, what I get, and I s I recommend you doing the same because how many bits it has. Of course, it's important to some extent. Of course, th this is something important for me. Well, how much you can record in it? If it records twelve raw, raw twelve or twelve bits, it's okay for me. That's the only parameter that's interesting for me. The rest, I judge by sampling by testing. They can write. I used to work on Black Magics, and unfortunately. They write a lot about black magic, with all due respect to black magic, but this is not my approach. So there is a difference in R5 and C500, and it's not the difference that I took, for example, okay, they write this has this parameters and that parameter. No, I make a project and I, I made tests for the project, and with the same settings, I saw how it worked in DaVinci, yeah? how it cuts, for example, down my, my highlight, what happens in the low-key uh, filming. You have to judge it in such a way. This is the best solution. Because, you know, numbers, yeah, fine. This is, uh, these are important parameters. But I strongly recommend which optics you use, what sort of lighting you use, this is also important. And I also recommend to you to use the lighting, the, the lighting because that discerns us if you're work working with a camera then you have to do the lighting you don't need huge tools i have like those funny little lights the 100 is 25 euro um sony which i which i can always take with me just put a stream of light or beam of light even i know i'm you know i'm 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 doing um, I'm doing uh, movies, but I also have my own business. I'm doing uh, broadcasting. I have like a transmission van, and we, we did like sports broadcasting. I do a lot of broadcasting, and I know what, how, with a simple uh, feature, what really does the light, and on these cameras only get the the real real three-dimensional image when they got the right lighting so it's better to focus on the light than on the on the parameters because you can do everything with the lighting image is light so you know that of course and just to be clear i'm not buying gadgets i have like my full garage is full of lighting i have 400s 200s dido they're all my own. I, I'm really sorry I didn't take a dado with me. It, we have a problem here. I could put it in my car and we, we could have fun with the lighting. I, I, I fell in love with them on Jasmine uh, filming set because I saw what Krzysztof Ptak was doing with Cine Out, the first digital movie in, made in Poland, Jasmine. And th there was a Cine Alta. We were all like gulping, looking at that. And Krzysztof was walking up. Uh, there's a scene with the with the coffins and he had just three dados reflected from the thermodynamic mirror and it uh, in real life it looks crazy but we looked in the camera we didn't touch the camera because it was a stati static shot there was we didn't see much in the camera Christ but however Krzysztof took the light meter he said okay he he put gain up to six and says well it's gonna be beautiful and it was beautiful that's it Listen, just moving away a bit from this topic, we have fantastic tools. We have. I love Canon. You might, I don't know, the majority, I don't know. You like Sony. It doesn't matter. But we have fantastic tools. And with really no lighting at all, we can do miracles. We can compete with materials, with the productions which 10 years ago we we wouldn't we wouldn't they wouldn't be out of, the, of our reach 10 or 15 years ago i made productions then 12k uh, uh, kilowatts would, was like a basis just to get a contour i run right now i have four four kilowatts and and the guys are angry with me they said you you took only four kilowatts because you know the the, the, the lighters also want to the, the gaffers also want to 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 work but i'm loyal towards the producer and i cannot get um uh, pay a lot for the lighting yes but what's my what's my what i wanted to say 
with those cameras, with, in a minimal work, you will be able to discern yourself to, against those who are not using the light. Because some people don't know. They say, oh, it looks nice, but it's enough, a small beam of light, a, uh, a blend, uh, a reflection, and you have a totally different image. And that's the whole magic. And that's where you should look for solutions. And remember, I know that everybody's running away to Ari because when I was going to, to camera image, I did the same. Panavision, Ari, everything that is big. I, and I understand that and I have nothing against you because you want to be on the cutting edge. I understand. You want to be next to the big things. But if you learn to work on such, um, I would say, budget equipment, and you will be able to work with the right with the light properly. You have will have the under, understanding of the work of the camera, and have the the freedom of movement with the camera and telling and storytelling with the camera, creating the the world with your light. When you get the Ari, it's gonna be even better. That's in that assumption because, of course. The second, the, those huge cameras, you know, they have much more sensitivity, better calls after exposition, but this should not cause you to go to the top equipment to, for which cost 200, 500 thousand zlotys, yes? Because if you learn your trade for the cameras which cost 3,000 zlotys, then you're gonna flow, then it's gonna be perfect. And that's how it works. That's why I don't have big pressure to buy very expensive camera. But when we were doing the Weigel, we were offered to make it on better cameras. But when my producer put those two things together, and he said, it doesn't make sense. That it's such a big difference in price. Of course, I'm talking about you, the young filmmakers, who, made to, who have to do a lot of things to finally be discovered by your target producer or your director because this is what it's all about if you want to be a DOP because the, it's the director um, I think even more the director decides that he wants to work with you for me it was a big distinction when I was called by Mariusz Bonaszewski and he asked me to make movies for his film debut he made a movie with Arek Tomek he could have everybody Mariusz is a top five act, one, one of the top, top five actors in Poland. He's like on three VOD platforms uh, in Poland. But it's a tough job. Yesterday I heard incredible things because I'm here for the first time. I, I heard one great truth from Sławomir Idziek. It is a lottery of sorts, but it is for an absolutely determined people because the majority give up because they have no patience to wait. But here you cannot give up. And secondly, you have to do something all the time, all the time. If I had really started to do, do I, do, I did some movie, short movie just for free. I said, okay, I'm just pay me for my, just, just pay me for my, um, uh, for, for, for the fuel and food. And, you know, I did, I took 5D Mark III and I was testing it and we were doing the job f almost for no money at all. Uh, my people would come over and they would do it with me and we did a, a short form, I don't know, they're like a local band playing some, doing some musical video from our region. It doesn't matter. You can't, I had eight months of break of, of, of a hiatus. And so after eight months, I got a new project and Jan Gaios came to me and he patted me on the shoulder, said, you're lucky you didn't forget. So you always have to, you always have to be at work. Don't think about features, do everything that you can, because everything is learning. Everything is honing your toolbox. Every project that I do, uh, I'm doing some commercial campaigns or, or social campaigns. I'm get, taking anything because every production is a free workshop for you. Not a free, because if somebody takes you for a project, they pay you. Not only you get money for this, but you'll also learn. Because you will learn only in such a way. And of course, filming sets. After the filming sets, I was going for, after the film school, I, I was going around the filming sets, 
um, for five years. I did uh, I did um, making of and and other materials. I I went to to many filming scenes. I didn't want anything from them. I was just giving them the materials so, just so I could be there and observe the the professionals. And you know how it is today. I'm getting a crew. I'm calling the guys. Uh, I take guys from the film school, and immediately they they ask me how much will I get, and I disqualify them. I say I'm saying listen, I have 20 guys who will not ask about the money. So also take that into account. That if you have the option to get to a big, like large budget filming set to see how professionals work, believe me that this is how you do things. If you if you ask about the fee, nobody will call you anymore. If you are in the beginning of your, of your uh, if it's the beginning of your professional path. But as a light of the tunnel, after five years of of driving around the, the filming set, I got such a good workshop, I got such a good skill set and above all connections that I got better and better projects. I got, they got bought by Planet, by Canal Plus, Canal Plus. This feature debut, my from the film school, Canal Plus bought it twice. We almost got back our whole budget. I made it for 170,000 zlotys and they bought it. They, 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 they saw us in a festival and they bought it. So if you do things, there's a high probability that somebody will see it and will notice you. And if you'll be walking around complaining that life's hard, you will be walking around and saying that life's hard. So I've been 15 years in this uh, industry. Um, I'm an old guy because I was 30 when I got to to school, but I'm a youngster in this industry. But as Wojtek Smarzowski told me, because I was making a documentary with Wojtek Smarzowski, he said, man, just do what you do because the list is growing. There will be a time for big ambitious projects, even though I'm, I can't hide that these projects are better and more ambitious. Why? Because we cause that. Our will to work and our determination to increase our level, our quality. I don't complain about my fees. They are okay. I would say they're competitive, but they're fine for me. But we want to get it better and better because we started from a 10 day documentary and to right now we did a feature mo feature movie and there's a big distributor who's interested into showing that in the cinema. So guys, so listen, so suddenly I got a project which will be shown in the cinema. So hopefully that cannot, Canon will sort of uh, uh, pay them the review. Okay, guys, I've been uh, talking and talking on and do you have any more questions? I have a question. Thanks. I have a question, maybe general technical, not about uh, cannons. It's more about gimbal, about crane. Why do you have such gimbal? You have Ronin systems. I know that maybe uh, I'm getting straying away from your subject, but I will ask you about that. The fact that I have this crane is. Uh, I was looking for something. I needed. I didn't have a have a R5 to to put to combine it with C500. So there's a C500 on this gimbal. It's not convenient at all. Today with uh, R5, it's um, more convenient. I think there are better solutions than a crane. But if I bought it, it works and absolutely, it's sort of paid its price. I'm using it because I'm I'm not using that very often. It's. Uh, I have my own Steadicam, so if we're looking some complicated stuff, then we're using a Steadicam. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm a totally independent. I'm a, I'm a sort of a, uh, I, I can pack everything in my car and I have everything at my disposal. And this, this is the comfort that is that is uh, uh, f that people appreciate when they buy my services. I have everything on my tablet. I can run around. I'm independent. I decide and I steer with with R5. I can also decide on the pr quickness of so focus. It doesn't work with with AFs. There are three parameters for. Uh, steering the focus for controlling the focus of course you have to be manual in focusing but these are like budget solutions if uh, the, you pay 1500 zlotys uh, I must tell you it's about uh, there will be some 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 fantastic uh, uh, presentation of a guy who's a focus puller I would want to listen to it myself it's a fantastic job it's a, 
there are no people on the market who can do it with the projects where these things are complicated these are people who are who really have like a centimeter in their eye it's important but i solved that i was not looking at parameters i was testing it and i found out that it works in a good lighting i would never do that with underexposure because they go crazy but uh, in good light they work very well they if you have a, if you have approval from the director then why should i look for other solutions if it ain't broke don't, don't fix it we're with those product we're at budgets and productions you know what the situation is i said here that for projects and cameras film like big film is camera there's a, i would say maybe 50 80 at most projects in poland and for the for the projects with this camera we have thousands of them it's your choice then and for those who are patient, as Smarzowski said, if you're, if you're patient, things will come to you. And you will work in the prime, uh, on the prime camera, uh, on prime cameras, but you have to wait you, uh, in the queue. If this is your fate, it will come. Is there anybody else who would like to ask me something? Silence. I talked you to death. Thank you very much. I would like to invite you to have fun with the with the Canon cameras. We have a really nice topic to film. So we're at your we're at your disposal with the camera. We're trying to help with the organizers. And this camera is at your service in our Canon group. So if you want to come and have some fun with camera, just talk to me. I have a rig to it, so you can. Um, carry it around thank you thank you very much